Welcome to another episode of Behind the Science On Location. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. Did you know that we have multiple companies under the Waters brand? Well, we do, and one of them is Vicam. Vicam is a division of Waters dedicated to the development of rapid diagnostics and laboratory sample prep for food and agriculture quality and safety. In this episode, we will take a closer look at the plastic containers that food and drink are stored in. There are thousands of different plastics with various compositions and uses. We'll take a look at a chemical used in the manufacture of some plastics and epoxy resins. It's called bisphenol A or BPA. So what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Vicam lab. Hi, Melissa, how are you? Jen, how's it going? Good, how's the baby? She's good, she's getting so big. It's crazy how time flies. You know, we're moving out of the infant formula stage and onto baby food and sippy cups. And I just saw something online that I should be concerned if things are not BPA free, that it can cause issues with her brain development and activity. So now I'm kind of freaking out, trying to figure out of all these options, what is good and what's not. I know, we were just here and you were pregnant and we were talking about the safety of infant formula and now we're looking at sippy cups. And it happens to be your lucky day because I have Elise here with me and she does a lot of testing on that. Yeah, so I'm one of the scientists in, in the Vicam team and we're dedicated to rapid diagnostics in food and agriculture. And uh, we've been looking at BPA because it's a big issue. It's a plasticizer that's used in the lining of cans and, and sippy cups and baby food pouches right. like you found. Um, and it's been around since the 60s, but it's only recently they've started realizing what a problem it is. Um, and it's a known endocrine disruptor, so it causes all these issues like you were mentioning with behavior and obesity, all sorts of things like that. So we've got this new test that um, is looking for it, I think. Might That's help great. I mean, maybe we can go to whiteboard and you can explain a little further what BPA is and so I understand what I'm talking about. Sure. Great. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. good. BPA stands for bisphenol A, that's its real chemical name, and historically it was actually developed as an estrogen mimic intended to be used as a birth control, but it really didn't work so well for that, so it was shelved for a number of years. And then in the 1960s, um, they pulled it out and they found that it was a very effective plasticizer um, to be used in the production of polycarbonate plastics. And it started to be used in the linings of cans, and we carried on for decades completely oblivious, but in 2005, California started to implement the first policies that uh, banned or restricted the use of BPA in the production of these plastics. And now 30 states have actually followed suit. In 2006, the EU actually set a hard line over there and banned it in the, in the use of all polycarbonate plastics and sippy cups and such things as we were just talking about. Elise, so we have our sample here and I assume we can just pour it in? No, no, please don't do that. First of all, we have to make an extract. Okay, so I'll hand it over to you. Great. So what we do is we take our little pouch of baby food and we put it in a blender with some methanol, kind of like making a milkshake. We whiz it up, put it through a filter and dilute it with some PBS and then it's ready to load on one of our columns. Okay. So we have one right here and I've loaded it onto the column stand and you'll notice I've got it here on a glass holder. We've got some plastic ones over here. We want to avoid the polycarbonate plastics because BPA is ubiquitous in our environment and what we really want to look at is the trace amounts of BPA that are in this baby food and nothing else. And we're going to load our sample in here. So, um, so once our sample is on there, um, this is an immuno affinity column which means there's antibodies in there which are small molecules that kind of work like a magnet for our specific analyte. They're going to grab that and we can wash away all the carrots and raspberries and blueberries and all those delicious things for the baby. We don't want those in our test. So they will be all gone and all we're left with on the column is the BPA. So it's held on there, then we come back and we elute it um, into, a, into a vial, into a cuvette, and we can take it over to one of our UPLC instruments and see exactly how much we have. Great, let's take a look at some data. Awesome. So here you can see three different examples of chromatograms from three different um, drinks. Uh, the top one is a cola drink. We have an orange juice and a dairy-based coffee drink. And what you can see is a very clear baseline and a very distinct peak for the BPA in each of the three examples. Many countries ban or strictly limit the use of BPA in food or beverage containers like the ones we saw today in infant or toddler food pouches and sippy cups. If you would like to learn more about this rapid test, check out the link below and join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science on Location.